Hello and welcome everybody to a very condensed, micro, short documentary about your golf driver and the history of revolutionary golf drivers. It seems like every year on a webpage I'm reading something about a revolutionary golf driver and every year it just doesn't pan out. Not all of the golf clubs are revolutionary. So what clubs brought ideas that really stuck? Well, let's talk about that. We have to start all the way at the beginning in Scotland, when they first started making clubs, they just used whatever wood was lying around. Most of the time they were using ash for the shaft, and you could use ash for the club head in a pinch. And now all the Americans out there are scratching their heads thinking, wait a second, we have something else that's made out of ash that we use for a game where we hit a ball with something made out of ash. So ash is the answer to modern clubs. Maybe not, because once they started importing things from America, one of these items was hickory in large quantities for axe handles, hammer handles. And it didn't take long before somebody, a golfer, scratched his head and said, wait a second, if hickory makes a good axe handle, why would we not use that in a golf club? Brilliant idea, let's do that. And so they started using hickory, enter the hickory age. And then for the club head, for the woods, they also discovered an American wood that seemed to be ideal, persimmon. Now we're getting really close to modern drivers. What's missing? Well, to set the stage for this video, we're gonna jump to kind of the 20s here and 20s to 40s. So they had persimmon wood heads, they had hickory shafts, but in 1926, you'll find that the USGA legalized steel shafts for clubs. And you'll also find that face inserts became very popular. Okay, now at this point, we've had, we have a modern driver. So let's look at the modern driver real quick. We have a grip, it can be leather or it can be rubber. Steel shaft, very common. Face insert in a persimmon wood, many were perimeter weighted in this case, in the aft portion of the club head and a sole plate, all right? So this is a modern driver, rolling bulge, easy to hit. This lasted for decades, all the way up until the 80s. And now, it wasn't until the 80s where we started seeing some really fast paced progression. And even then, maybe not every single club released was revolutionary. One of the first ones that was adopted, that left its mark, was the TaylorMade Pittsburgh Persimmon. This is a stainless steel driver. This is a mid 80s version, not the early 80s version because they have the changed logo right here. This introduced the idea that a steel club head could feel similar and look similar to its persimmon counterpart. And that's great, some of you may say, but if you look at the persimmon heads, lots of these persimmon woods were actually larger than the Pittsburgh persimmon. So who then would we turn to to enlarge a stainless steel head? Well, some of you out there are gonna say, well, there's a little blue pill that might do that. Well, I say we turn to Eli Calloway and his big Bertha. He introduced the S2H2, the short, straight, hollow hosel. Okay, so if we look here at the TaylorMade, this came in the early 80s and this came in 1991 about 10 years, roughly, from this club to this club. Now, looking at these, there's one obvious difference. This one has a little winky right here that's made out of stainless steel. So if you cut that off and you take that mass and you put it in this head, all of a sudden you have a lovely, enlarged, swollen head with great weight distribution that is very easy to hit. It hits like a very well lubed. So we're done, right? I mean, Callaway Big Bertha, how could it possibly get any better? Unless it could get even bigger, but in order for it to get bigger, you would need a different material. Enter technology from the SR71 Blackbird. That's what we have right here the very widely adopted, revolutionary, titanium, Great Big Bertha. Obviously, the Great Big Bertha wasn't the first 
titanium driver. However, it was one that was widely adopted and really set the standard for all the other manufacturers making things out of titanium. How could Callaway possibly improve on this? So I had to bring this in front of the camera so you could see this up close. Lovely titanium married with this amazing carbon fiber. Such an interesting design. This is something that I think a lot of people remember. I think there are modern clubs that are still trying to mimic this with their design, whether it be texture or whether it be just paint. So very interesting and definitely materials that you still find used today in drivers. Looking at the bottom here, ERST obviously named after the founder Callaway, Eli R. Callaway right here, Fusion 10 degree. This is just such really a revolutionary club when it comes to materials and the sound. I've hit this club, it feels like a dream and it sounds amazing. And then right on the heels of this, so Callaway obviously exploring materials, revolutionary, and then TaylorMade comes along and introduces what the R7 quad. So now all of a sudden we have adjustable weights. You combine these two things right here, adjustable weights, interesting materials, and you increase the size to 460 cc and then all of a sudden what do we have so we've arrived right taylor may just blows this up to 460 cc and we have a modern driver done right adjustable weights but wait you may notice that there is a little shaft sticking up right here what else could anybody possibly dream up that would improve this home customization because we live in the customization era we order things online and we can just custom fit it at home, right? Or take it to a pro shop and have them fine tune it for us. To make that super easy, to complete the modern era driver, we're missing one thing from the TaylorMade Quad Series, and that is adjustable loft and lie. So all you need, and strangely, you use a Torx bit size T25 to adjust this hosel right here. You use the same size to adjust the weights in the quad, the tailor-made quad. So they seem to set the standard here for your torque spit size. So even with 80 years of research and development at my fingertips, it's still just really easy to block a shot 40 yards to the right. And so here I am right now holding, almost got hit in the face with 80 years of driver technology right here in front of the camera. Have you ever seen all of these clubs together in one place? This is really starting to cramp my left hand. It's really starting to hurt right now. So reviewing real quick, we have the persimmon woods with face inserts and perimeter weighting in a steel shaft and rubber or leather grips, followed by the Pittsburgh persimmon tailor-made. I can't point, I can just look at this tailor-made pers Pittsburgh persimmon introducing stainless steel. Mizuno, which I don't have here in front of the camera, introducing carbon fiber in the 80s as well. The 1991, we moved to the Callaway Big Bertha, followed by the great Big Bertha made out of titanium. Who doesn't want a titanium driver? And then we have the Callaway ERC Fusion introducing the marriage between titanium and carbon fiber, lovely composites. Then we have adjustable weights and adjustable hosels. Let me know what I missed and let me know what your favorite driver is. I have an Amazon shop. You can go to the description below and you can support this channel by purchasing something off of that shop. Please subscribe. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I am the Vintage Golfer.